Hey everybody, this is Joel Hoekstra of White Snake and Trans-Siberian Orchestra. I have a new album coming out from my side project, Joel Hoekstra's 13, that's called Dying to Live. I'm going to play through the opening track of that album, Say Goodbye to the Sun, for you. Um, it's an Alice in Chains-ish, Dio-ish mashup with a little shred solo in the middle, and I hope you enjoy it. Okay, so the main riff to the song really is, is just like a old school 90s drop D riff that everybody was doing. But hey, I can do anything I want nowadays on these uh, label like Frontiers, so why not, man? It's part of what's in me. So, uh, anyway, the riff is. Uh But I, I thought, let's make it a little more interesting and have a nice dissonant stab in there as an answer to say goodbye to the sun. So um, I came up with this, this chord that actually I've been using it for years, man. It's just like a little uh, thing out of the D blue skip. So I'm getting D, A flat, A, and F. Which incidentally works really well if you move it up a minor third. Three frets. Been using those chords for years as just kind of like a cool dissonant stab. So anyway, uh, the 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 uh, chorus riff. That's 
that's the basic idea there. When you're in drop D, for those that are beginners, this is a power chord. That's the nice advantage to having the, the low E dropped, is that instead of needing this pattern, you compensate for that whole step being down by making it the same fret. So that's a big advantage to drop D riffing for those that haven't done it. So um, anyway, the bridge. So basically just a muted power chord riff. On the low E. Which are all hammer on and pull off. So um, beginners out there, when you do a hammer, uh, hammer on, it's kind of easy. You just set the finger down without picking. Only picking the third fret. Now to get a clear pull off for you beginners out there, always snap your finger down. Don't try and push it up. So you get. And same here, when I'm going to pull off to the open, I'm not going to push my middle, my first finger up, I'm going to pull it down. So I have... Anyway, so there, there's a basic idea of how to do the, the opening of the bridge. Now it's just going to move up, but instead of just staying here, I'm going to drop down to these. And yes, my pick slides sound really good because I have a thin stainless steel pick, which really gets between the grooves of the string. Those that uh, haven't seen these before, I highly advise it even just for overdubs in the studio. If you want to just have a great pick slide, um, they're, they're fantastic for that. Even if you just want to use your normal pick, uh, it doesn't hurt to have some of these handy and they can really dig in between the grooves. Sound quite a bit more monstrous than like a thick, um, extra heavy pick or something. So uh, anyway, I guess that would bring us to the solo. Uh, the riffs are kind of straightforward in the, in the song, really. Um, just more about the vocal and the hooks. Um, so the solo, I'm just coming out of like a D minor thinking on this, uh, just riffing over the main riff. So I guess the opening has one of those I, I would describe as like a George Lynch type half step bend. <laughs> kind of going from the E to an F note. Now I'm gunning for a little bit more sonic chaos in the next part, so instead of just playing right out of D minor pentatonic, which I think was... So I'm drop D for that, but I think most people probably know the pentatonic scale being there. This is a little trick I do to get outside sometimes if I just want to be a little weird with it. Um, I'm just going to use one half step above this pentatonic note, so I have... So that's the next lick. It's all again, all hammer ons and pull offs. And then. Oops. So we have. One more time. Now I just get into a series of pulling off to open strings. Um, always a fun riff for those that haven't done it. It's a great way to sound active, have a fiery run with limited picking. Um, so I have... So... Basically all D minor pentatonic stuff. So I'm getting this pattern three times. Four times, I'm sorry. And, and then I'm finishing up here in the D blues scale that most people would be familiar with. So we have... Uh, which you can mute if, uh, if your sound is right or play it kind of open, I don't know. Kind of flying with our tone here, so um, you know that's the general idea uh, of of the pull off. So let's see, we got all 
Okay, now back to more of that sonic chaos thing. I'm again just thinking in the D blue scale um, and trying to take it a little bit out. So I've got. Um, so. So I'm getting the F, hammering on the A flat and the A. So instead of maybe this lick, which more people would be familiar with. Just putting a slight twist on it by getting up to that A note. And now I'm going to go. So it's a great way to get that, that's that minor second that's getting that rub that sounds real trippy. Which those that haven't toyed around with that before, it's a great, like, you know, special effect sounding thing. If you haven't toyed around with that, that's how a minor second looks a four fret stretch on these strings, a three fret stretch here. Anyway, I've toyed around with those for years, and I just threw that into more of an actual run. So I'm going kind of the idea of adding that extra note into the pentaton. And then I'm bending to it a D note there at the top. So that whole sequence here. So, from the beginning. Okay, now the fun stuff at the end. Um, for years I've worked to just tapping an octave away from what scales I'm playing with my left hand. So if I was gonna just play like a, you know, in that uh, Z blue scale. Anyway, so I'm just coming down the D blue scale basically. So obviously I had to compensate here. It would normally have been the, this placement, but with being drop D, I'm playing that here. So that run down. So the idea is I'm pretty much using the same fingers on my right hand that I'm using on my left. And when you tap, for those that haven't done a lot of it, um, you're going to pull up instead of trying to push down. Too much to do and too little a time on, on that. Uh, you get a clearer thing. It's just like the pull-offs with your left hand. You want to come down. So um, with this, you're coming up. You're coming across the string. Okay, so that's that run down. Okay, and then I finish by doing actually same type of thing, but with think two notes with each hand. So I'm just going to do a diminished seventh run, which would, really would have just been, you know. So, and I'm just going to pull off. So. Okay, so right here, again, so I'm hammering, I'm just setting down my ring finger here on uh, 17, pulling off to 14, pulling off to 5 and to 2. So there's your group of 4. And all you have to do is move it up a, a fret on the next string, another fret, and then two frets on the B. So we have, and then for the big bend at the end, which because I'm tapping, I'm just kind of plucking with the index on my right. So the ending run. So that whole tapping sequence there at the end. So I hope you give the album a shot. Once again, the uh, project is called Joel Hooksher's 13. It's got an amazing lineup on it. Uh, Russell Allen and Jeff Scott Soto sing two of the best singers in rock today. 
Uh, Vinny Appice is on drums from D.O. and Black Sabbath, of course. Uh, the great Tony Franklin from The Firm and Blue Murders on bass, and Derek Sherinian on keyboards. So um, very honored to have all those guys on there, and I, I hope you guys enjoy it. Uh, it's an album that I describe as Dio-ish at its heaviest and Foreigner-ish at its lightest. Um, it's really just like good old-fashioned classic melodic hard rock. So please check it out. Joel Hookster's 13. The album's called Dying to Live. 